Keeping it honest. You are fake news. Keeping it real. I want to smoke some pot. And keeping it libertarian. I'm a libertarian for life. These are the fakertarians. My superpower is being honest. I'll eat your ass. I will. So why? For a dollar fifty. It's time for the Fakertarian podcast number five on this June 27, 2020, featuring special guest LP chair candidate Joshua Smith. Now here's your host, John Hudak. John. Hey everyone, I'm John Hudak along with Brian Hagen. Today we have on uh, LNC chair candidate Joshua Smith. Joshua, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm hanging in there. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. I'm so <laughs> stoked to be I'm happy, here. I'm Let happy you're you. willing to come on. So. <laughs> We've had some differences over some things recently um, after I left the LPMC back in February. So before we get into the nitty gritty here, I'm just curious to hear your answer to this. Why should we and the people who like our page support your campaign? Like, give us a pitch. Support my campaign? Yeah. Well, give us a pitch. Oh, I mean, look, in, in 2018, I ran for national chairman. Everyone, everyone that watches this, everyone that goes to your page, everyone knows that I, I ran a campaign on ideas. I said that these things could be successful. I, I thought for sure that they could be successful. Uh, I wasn't given the opportunity to be the chair. If you remember, I got spanked pretty bad in that election. In fact, I took about 22 and a half percent of the vote. Almost a quarter though, for a guy that no one knew, that was pretty good. Uh, um, but they, I, I, did, I was honored with the position of an at-large representative, which is essentially uh, five members of the LNC that represent the entire body, uh, membership body as a whole. Um, and I was able to implement some of those ideas. I was able to go out and start building, uh, you know, a, a membership plan. I was able to go out and start building an aggressive media plan and start adding people to this regional media team that I wanted to put out. I mean, I've been doing the things I said I was going to do in 2018, and it's showing success in 2019 and beyond. In fact, in 2019, we had the largest and fastest membership growth this party has seen in over a decade since 2005. And I'm proud to know that I had a hand in that. You know, and I'm proud to know that. Some of the people that I brought in had a hand in that. People that they brought in had a hand in that. It's just kind of spiraled into this this uh, this membership drive that's been super successful for the party. Um, and and I still have a lot of those same ideas. You know, I want those aggressive media plans. I want the aggressive marketing. I want um, uh, marketing campaigns, viral marketing campaigns, pushed down to the state, pushed down to the local level, so we can get in front of everybody's faces at the same time. I still have those same goals. But now I have success to show, and I, and, and I think I've proved myself over the last two years that I can get those things done, um, and we can make the party more successful. So that's why they should vote for me, because I know that I have a blueprint to make this party more successful, and I've shown over the last two years that I can, I can get it done. Okay, so what some people don't know about you is that you were actually a co-founder of the Fakertarians page with me and a few others. So yep. where do you think we've went wrong? Oh, man. I think... <laughs> yeah. I think God, you want to? Uh, well, you know why I left. You know, you know the reason I left. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. The, the, the communist cat was a part of the mobs chat. He started going after Larry Sharp, who's my boy. You know, Larry. So let's is, let's be clear though. He's he's long gone though. Yeah, he's long gone. <laughs> but so so I left. I left there, and I think I think when you took it over, you were doing some good things. You were calling out, uh, you know, Liberty Hangout when they were having their their everyday bad takes uh, that they they enjoy doing over there, uh, and and uh, but I, you know. When it comes to the Mises Caucus, you know just as well as I do because we were both a part of the Mises Caucus. Uh, we were both – you were a part of the mod team. Uh, we get some some bozos in there sometimes. It happens. Uh, it happens in every caucus. I think the Socialist Caucus has had to kick out tankies left and right. Uh, and, and so we're going to get bozos in there who come, come to us thinking that we're going to support this or that or this or that. And we have, to, we have to really pay attention to that and pull them out, right? And so you know that me personally, I do that. So – if you come to me personally and you tell me about somebody, I'm probably going to go and look into it like I have several times over the last couple months even. Now, I've been extremely busy over the last year. I'm sure you know that, Sean. I'm sure you know that with me traveling state to state to state to state every weekend for months at a time, uh, raise, fundraising, membership calls, I mean, all this stuff that I'm doing, you know I'm busy. I get over 100 private messages a day on Facebook, okay? It's, it's insane. So... For me, it was like you came to me, you gave me fifteen minutes, uh, maybe it wasn't twenty-four fifteen hours, minutes. Come and on, and then you're making and then you're making call-out posts of, of me and all my friends. And so for me, that that's a problem because because we do have a close personal relationship. I expect you to come to me and say, "Hey, man, this guy, this guy, this guy," and you know I'm going to take care of it. It might not be right then when you tell me, but it's going to be within the next couple hours, maybe the next couple of days. It's going to happen, um, and I'm going to talk to the mod team. I'm going to talk to you know the the leadership team because I do that stuff all the time. So. Um, I, I think some of the public call-out posts have gone a little far. Uh, uh, 
I think that you've bred a culture of toxicity in the Fakertarians discussion chat. I know that that was your intent with that with that uh, group. Um, but, you know, that group's basically turned into a shit on Josh group uh, almost every day. You got some people in there that are absolutely obsessed with me. I mean, just completely obsessed with me. It's insane. Um, you know, I just, I just think that I think that if you're gonna if you're gonna go after Faker Terrans, you should be going after the people who are legitimate issues, legitimately are talking about these things that we don't want them talking about, like being white nationalists, like being, uh, you know, these hardcore neo Nazis or hardcore tankies or whatever it is. Those are people you should focus on. And if you tell your friends about them and they're in their groups, they're probably gonna take care of them at some point too. And so. So that's that's been my big issue issue with you, uh, you know, and and obviously some of the stuff with Dave because I'm a fan of Dave Smith too. I, I know people are going to give me shit for that. I don't we'll, care. We'll talk about that, uh, you know, and that's and that's fine. I've been a fan of Dave Smith for a while, you know. I've been a fan of Tom Woods for a while. I love I love Mises. Uh, I love the Mises Institute. Most of the people there. I, I have to give that caveat, you know. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of Gary North, but hey, you know. What <laughs> Uh, uh, Thank so God for that, or we probably wouldn't be talking right now. Right, right. Or, uh, or right. else I'd be stoning you to death. Sure, sure, sure. You know, I just think I just think that you have a lot of friends, Hudak, that you can come to and talk to when you need to, and 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 you know that people like me are going to go and, and try and handle it. If you know, it's it's the cost of policing of of your friends that has made some of your friends not want to talk to you anymore. You know what I mean? And I think that's where I think that's where you went wrong. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, we used to do really good work. You should do really good work. Okay. So l let's get into the LPMC a little bit. So do, do you think it's fair to say that some of these alt-rightish leaning people are attracted over there? I'm not even saying that it's the whole caucus or anything or even a majority, like a majority well, I, of the I caucus. I would hate for you to say that because there's 5,000, over 5,000 people on that Facebook no, group. No, I know. And you find one maybe every other month or something, man. So it's I, like, have, I have more than that. <laughs> okay. Listen. People join groups that they think are going to support their ideals, right? Typically, that happens. Sometimes they just go in to start shit. Sometimes they go in to watch. You know, it is what it is. If we see something in the group that alerts us, typically that mod that mod team is ready to get on it right away. They, you know, they they don't they don't tolerate. It literally says it in the in in the caucus planks. They don't tolerate identity and politics whatsoever, right? You know this. Now I know that maybe you've had an issue here, an issue there with mod. But for the most part, we're pretty good about getting rid of the problem, you know, and, and I've watched, I've been in that group since almost day one, right? When it had like 50, 56 people in there or something, it was when I joined. And then I started spamming the group every day for an endorsement. Uh, but it, it's, you know, people are going to come in that are, are problematic. It's going to happen. It's going to happen mm -hmm. in every single page, every single group, every single caucus uh, membership. I mean, it, it happens. You know, and, and, and the mod team does the best it can to regulate that stuff, even though there's over 5,000 people in that group. So if you're saying that, you know, some people, yeah, I get it. Some people are going to come in there and they're going to be problematic. And when we realize that, especially me, you should know me of all people is going to handle is going to handle that. We're not going to we're not going to go against what the what the, the caucus planks say. Right. And, and plain as day, clear as day, this is no identity politics. We do not. Uh, uh, contribute or, or work in identity politics whatsoever in that caucus. And so, I mean, I get it. People, people come in that are problematic, but you know, I, I think, I think that you, I think that you overblow the issue. I really do. Do you know where I'm going to go next with this? I don't care. <laughs> is, <laughs> is Europe is for Europeans identity politics? I, I, I believe so. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm just saying and, and, like, and 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 you can and you can bring that up all you want, but I'm the guy. I'm the one who went and got that guy removed. Oh, I know. I'm so, I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's you. I know you did have the guy removed, and I will say I, that I'm like, aware. In hey, terms of, some people are not always going to agree with you today. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. But but you still got friends, man. And so you should probably talk to those friends. You know what I'm saying? Instead of making these big call out posts, you have friends that are good moderators like me. I've been a great moderator between you and the caucus. Trust me, several times. Oh, I know about you that. Know, just, uh, and it, and it's you know you had a lot of friends there, man, and, and you went out and you kind of you kind of drug us all through the mud, and that and that was that was wrong. I think that was very wrong. I, I have a question though. I'm going to interject from kind of an outsider perspective. I've never been a member of the Mises Caucus. I've never been in that group. I've never seen any of that stuff. Like, and Josh, you and I get along just fine. John and I get along just fine, and all that. But from an outsider's perspective, sometimes something that I notice a lot 
there's such an overlap where you talk about, yes, people join and so on. And I understand that point. But why is there such a comfortability factor with, say, I'm going to use groipers. I've been on a real groiper kick lately. Those kids are just dumb shits. Why do they feel so comfortable interacting with everyone from the Mises caucus? And there never seems to be any pushback. And I'm talking about like discussions on Twitter and so on. In fact, if I interject something, there's a dog pile from Mises caucus members right in conjunction with Groypers. So from an outsider perspective, it certainly looks like they're all comfortable hanging out together. So I hear this a lot, man. And, and I just don't see it. I don't see it in the caucus group. Uh, I mean, Twitter's Twitter. You know, there's no groups on Twitter. Uh, people are going to say what they want. I mean, we, we just had... You know, this guy come out blatantly racist yesterday on the on the uh, Tennessee Libertarian Party page. That guy, as, yeah. As, as soon as I saw it, I went to the mod team. I went into the group, found him in the group. He's out. Okay, we we don't play those games, man. So so when people when people are saying that we're comfortable around those people, that's just not the truth. It's just that that is an outsider's perspective for people who are not in the group, right? They're not. They're not comfortable because once they start saying that stuff out loud. We, we have a pro we have a problem, you know, and so uh, that's just that's just where it is. I, I don't I don't see that problem. And I've been in that group for for three years. I've never you know, I've seen one, you know, I'll see a person make a helicopter joke. That person gets removed. They don't even allow helicopter jokes. In there, you know, so so if you make a white nationalist joke or you make some racist comments or something, you're probably going to be gone pretty quick. In fact, the mod, the page itself has keyword uh, setup alerts on it. So there's certain words that if somebody says in there, it automatically alerts the mods. It says to which words were said, and we, we investigate it. So it's really not, it's not like that at all. And, and you know, we get this, we get this constant blowback from, from people in the party and outside the party and vegetarians, and it's like, they're coming from every direction, man. If, if, if we really had a white nationalist problem, if we really had some problem with these people who hate Jews or whatever it is, with all the eyes that are on us all the time, you think you would be able to pinpoint it all constantly every day. It's just really not that way. It's, it, and, and some people might think that, but it's just not. And and I wouldn't be, a, look, I'm half Jew. I wouldn't be a part of it if it was like that. You know what I mean? I just wouldn't be in there. I just wouldn't. So It's just that there are times where it seems like there's a reluctance to kick certain members, like the, like the sure. Jesse Miller thing, or with uh, Emo Hoppian, uh, how he was kicked and then he was let back in if he agreed to tone it down. So just from, I'm, it just seems sometimes like it's kind of like a, I don't know if a presentation thing is the right word for it, but like, I know for, I know that the, the really like bad examples, they get the boot. Yeah, you got, you got two examples. But no, no, I'm giving you, keep I'm, giving you keep I'm giving you two. Okay. Chad Lane. A five, a five what about the guy? 5,000 people, John. Okay. Yeah. You can name two, three, four, five. No, I, I, mean, I can keep going. That have not been kicked out. Yes. They Chad, have been Chad Lane out. was let back in. He's a good friend of Jared Howe. I don't. I don't know Chad Lane. I don't know that one. We, we still, talked about him. You're naming two, three, four people here. I mean, the the guy who said that his uh, he was upset that his he had a what was it a kid with his. Mexican girlfriend and that she was dirtied with Mexican. We never released the name on that. I didn't want I know. First of all, I know who that is. And I know, yeah. I know, I know what he was saying. He wasn't, he wasn't saying that seriously. First of all. Okay. Uh, I, I just noticed he was, he was mad when Jesse Miller got kicked. No, he was. So, so I know that guy personally. First okay. of all, it's, he, it, it's, he, he was talking to somebody else that was making white nationalist remarks. And so he was being sarcastic to that person. If you I believe read it was Miller. Thread, huh? Yeah, so I believe well, it was Jesse Miller. So, so it doesn't. So what I'm saying is, is you know this this you know opinion that that this caucus is is comfortable with those people, or or that we have some huge problem with those people. It's just not like that, man. In fact, you know half, half of those people call us LP cucks, man. You know, it's oh, like a did. constant thing for us. And and so you know, and and you're not helping our cause at all by constantly calling these things out publicly instead of just coming to me, you know, and, th and that's what's feeding this, this constant drama that we're some white nationalist uh, adjacent, alt-right adjacent caucus. We're not. We like Austrian economics, you know. We want to we want to reform the party so that it's a successful political vehicle. We want to help local and state candidates, and, and we want to work on ballot initiatives, and that's what we're doing. That's what we do with the money that we raise in the caucus. It's a good caucus that does really good things. In fact, it's probably the hardest working caucus I will say it's the hardest working caucus in the LP that has done more for candidates, actual 
financially done more for candidates over the last year than any of the other caucuses. And to give them that bad name constantly because they might have one or two or five or ten even uh, bad members who come in and get associated and then get kicked out. It's, it's just wrong. I think but it's, it's, it's the reluctance to kick in certain instances. Like that's it's, why I that's why I left over the Miller thing. Yeah, you, and you got to understand, there's more than one mod, right? And so when people mod it, they're not always gonna they're not always gonna agree right away. But right, but this went people to the have top. asked you in the past. People have asked you in the past. Give more, give more info. Give more info. Give more info. When you come to me, I say, give me the info. Just give me the. Oh info, yeah, no, right? you definitely, you definitely do like accept the yeah. info. I will, so, I will say so that again. Again, not all mods 100% agree on everything all the time, but usually they do something far enough where they go right. And so it's it's just I just think that we're we're fighting, uh, you know, this this invisible monster that just doesn't it just doesn't exist in the comics, man. It really doesn't. I, I you know, if if I thought you know me, you know me how long? How long? Mm-hmm. A few Four years. years. Five yeah, something years. like that. Something like that. Do you think? Do you think I would stay associated with the caucus if I really believed that they had a problem? A big problem? No. No. If I if I really believed that we were alt right adjacent or 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 anti Jew or or anti or, or you know racist or whatever, do you really think that I would stay in that caucus? Do you believe that? No, I don't. Okay. That's. I mean, that's it. That's that's the argument. The caucus is not alt right adjacent. In fact, they hate us. I think it's that some of them them. feel comfortable there. Not not that necessarily Mm -hmm. you're comfortable in in your group. They feel comfortable in your group, too. They feel comfortable on Twitter. They feel comfortable anywhere until they get kicked out. That's how it works. They feel comfortable in any group until they get kicked out. But it's not that like it's not that like it's like Tanky is joining and feel comfortable. It's like a very specific strand. But we can agree to disagree on this so we can move on to other things. (laughs) So. Unless you want to say anything else about it, but no. um, okay. So I've seen some talk. I mean, we can talk about another LPMC thing, but this isn't like an alt right thing. Um, well, that's good. So there's been I've seen some talk recently from LP, LPMC members, including some in leadership, about getting rid of the LPs uh, LPs abortion platform plank, and also never, there's been never been a goal of MC, not once. No, no, no. I said. Members, not not that it's not, not that it's necessarily a caucus driven thing, but that some in leadership are pushing for it. Not as a caucus driven thing, but as I was going to ask if you what you think about removing that or the immigration plank. I think, well, I, I you know, I've gone back and forth on the abortion plank on what I, how I feel about that plank because I do think it's a, such a divisive issue. Um, but we don't really take us we don't really take a stance on it as a party, so I've never had a huge issue with the plank itself. Um, but you know, every single national convention for this party, people get together and try to, uh, uh, abort those two planks, man. It's, it's, it's a common occurrence. It happens every two years. They have to get, you know, two thirds of, of, of the votes to say, to, to delete it. And they never get enough. They never, ever get enough. So it's like, to me, it's a moot point. I don't really care. Some people, you know, some people believe that abortion is murder. Some people believe that abortion is not murder. And, and, and the LP holds good faith. It literally says in our plank, it holds good faith arguments on both sides of this issue. So I'm not going to I'm not going to hold that against anybody in the Libertarian Party if they if they're pro-life or pro or, or, or uh, uh, pro-choice. I don't care. I literally don't care. I'm an individual and I have my own views on that. But I, I'm not you know me. I'm not ever going to push for legislation, any kind of legislation for anything else on top of all the legislation we already have. So it's to me, it's it's a non-issue, man. I, People are going to constantly always go after those two planks because they think they're divisive. And truth be told, they are wedge issues, man. Those two issues are wedge issues. They serve to divide this, the, the public in this country. It, it, literally, that's all they do. Uh, you know, and the, the LNC has, we have, we cannot, we can debate these issues all day, but we're, we don't have any power over those issues at all. The LNC doesn't, the LP doesn't. I mean, I, Maybe Amash does, you know, now that we have a, a, a you know, a, a congressman with, with the yellow next to his name. But uh, it's it's just it's just not issues that affect me. And I, I don't you know, I, obviously, I, I've been an open borders advocate for a long time. I think that, uh, you know, when 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 people and and, and um, money can't cross borders, that, that armies will, you know, it's it's tell as old as time. Uh, and I think it's good for the economy to let people mm-hmm. immigrate here and work. And uh, I don't hold up any kind of public. I've never held a public view on on, on uh, abortion, so it just doesn't matter to me because there's always going to be both sides of that argument in this party. It's been like that since its inception, 1971. It's going to continue to be like that long after I'm dead, I'm sure. And so, 
people are going to get together and do that. Some people, some of them might be in the Mises caucus. I guarantee you some of them are in the Pratt caucus too. You know, I bet, I'll oh, yeah. bet you some of them, I don't you know, probably there's not going to be any of the audacious caucus um, or the radical mm-hmm. caucus or, but, but you know, it, it's just how it is. There's, there's radical minarchists in the, in the Mises caucus as, as much as there are anarchists in the Mises caucus. It's a, you know, it's an yeah. economic driven caucus. So, so well, in terms of immigration, what level of bordertarianism, I'll call it, should be welcome in the LP? Like, it, I I know there's like there's the o- full open borders or private borders or something. Then there's the Ellis Island model. There's but like, can build the wall be an acceptable position? No, or? I don't think okay. build, I don't think building walls is an acceptable. I really okay. don't think it's an acceptable thing for 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 the Libertarian Party. We can't we can't purport to be uh, you know for individual liberty for all and then say let's build a wall and keep everybody in and everybody else out. Um, you know I think I think if you own property, say you got five acres, and you want to put a wall up there, go for it, man. Absolutely, you should be able to do that. Uh, you know your 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 right to property ends at the end of your property line, and so uh, you know I'm not a big fan of this this argument that because the rest of the part po- you know, property is publicly owned that that we shouldn't be letting people use it. And I'm, I just don't, you know, it's like, yeah, the government owns it, man. And, they, and they're killing people in the streets and they're killing people overseas. And so like your argument really doesn't hold a lot of weight to me. You know what I mean? We shouldn't, we should free up all that property and start, you know, maybe the homeless problem wouldn't be so bad if, you know, we didn't have all these zoning issues and, and public lands and all this stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, your, your right to property stops at the end of the property that you're paying for currently. And I just don't, you know, we, we could say that everybody owns the public property, but it just, that argument's never held any weight with me. So I'm with you on that. So speaking of that argument, I was curious about this, about what your take is on Hans Hermann Hoppe, because I'm wondering if do you think he's someone to look up to, or even if you disagree with some of his things, or do you think he's a little too close with the alt-right? Because I've seen the thing where he endorsed, even though, well, there was the whole Chase Rachel's debacle um but he did endorse chase chase's radical capitalist site in another article he published and he did the whole thing where he invited jared taylor to talk about race relations in his property and freedom society conference so i was just curious where you're at with hoppa you're not gonna get the answer you want here it's fine <laughs> i'm, I'm I, literally uh, i'm curious i'm not trying to like set you up i've i've, I've read part of one book by hoppa um, I, I agreed with some of the stuff that he said, you know, uh, I, but I don't, I've, I think I watched one speech by Hoppe. It was like about 30 minutes long. Other than that, I haven't really followed Hoppe, man. I've just, it's never been one of those things that I've followed. Um, you know, I, I don't know enough about Hans Hermann Hoppe to, to say one way or the other, to be honest with you. And, and it, you know, if, if the stuff you're saying is true, I'm probably not going to be a huge fan of them. I mean, just to be honest, and you know that. Um, yeah. I haven't, you know. You, you know who you know who I love. I love no, Hoppe. I knew you weren't a big Hoppe, I, Hoppe guy. Yeah, I was just you know, curious I, where you're I at. like Paul and, 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 you know, I like these, these people who, who uh, you know, preach radical libertarianism. That's what I like. And so uh, I just haven't ever really gotten into Hoppe too much. And, and so I really just don't have the answer for you that you want, I'm sure. Well, no, it's not that I want. I was, I was legitimately curious about where you were going to go with it. So speaking of people who have at one point preached radical li- libertarianism, uh, I'll just say it, Stefan Molyneux. Not a fan. Next. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not the great Stefan Molyneux? I'm not a fan, man. I'm not a fan of Stefan Molyneux. <laughs> you know that. So, okay. So going from Stefan Molyneux to an adjacent topic, since we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're going straight past that. You, you think we're wrong about Dave Smith, right? I, I think you're wrong about Dave Smith. I, I, I love Dave. I think Dave's awesome. Um, I think Dave sometimes doesn't challenge people enough on his shows. I, I think that Dave's a professional comedian and tells jokes that people don't like, but you guys aren't going after Dave Chappelle for making trans jokes. Well, no, but uh, it was to, it was to count no, well, like three no, days no, after That's Charlotte not a fair comparison getting, at all, John. You're that's picking and choosing, you're picking and choosing your, oh, your professional comedians because, nope. because this one's close to the movement, right? No, because it, they, no. Because Ch- if Chappelle interviewed Cantwell three day after three days after Charlottesville, and Cantwell sure. said something about trans being trans people being no, it's not just the interview; it's what was said. If Cantwell said something about trans people being liars, and and Chappelle was like, "Oh yeah, can't even lie," or they lie about I don't I don't remember the exact quote, but like he was basically echoing what Cantwell was saying. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's all, all of them. 
Yeah, I've watched I a good amount of them. Yeah, I've watched a good yeah. amount of them. I, I don't think that's a fair comparison at all, Josh. I mean, I get where you're coming at, but I don't think that's fair. I mean, you've got Dave Smith who's bringing people into the party. Dave sure. Chappelle's not. You've got Dave sure. Smith who runs in the same circles as Tom Woods in the Mises Caucus. Dave Chappelle doesn't. So I think Dave Chappelle should be taken, off the, uh, taken out of the conversation and off the table in this conversation. With Dave Smith, the thing is, okay, he's one I was referring to directly on Twitter. You talk about somebody who's care comfortable with the Groiper crowd. You talk about somebody who is constantly putting people down for pronouns. That's Dave Smith. If, if he's such a good person, then why does he think those type of attacks on people are acceptable? Oh, I haven't, I haven't seen a put, I haven't seen the pronoun put downs. So oh, all I, the time, <laughs> all the time. I just got it not too long ago. Did he call you an androgynous cowboy? <laughs> he did not, but if he had, I would have probably liked him more. <laughs> that was thing, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I would, love, I would love to harpoon Dave Chappelle and have Dave Chappelle bring people into this party. Well, sure, that'd be yeah. nice. It'd be great, right? Yeah. Even though he tells bad jokes and he might hang out with No, but it's not about it. It's not I'm about it being saying, an offensive joke or something like I'm, that. I'm just right. saying. I'm not even being a joke. I obviously, I haven't watched the clip you're talking about either, but I've been, I've been listening to Dave Smith for a long, a long time. Dave, Dave so very, very often does not challenge people as much as I would like to see him challenge people. I, I get that. He runs his show the way he wants to run his show. I run my podcast the way I want to run my podcast. You run your podcast the way you want to run your podcast. If I had Stefan Molyneux on my show, I'd probably challenge him a little more. That's just I who imagine. I am. And, and, I, and I said it publicly when this, all, this whole thing went down. I, I thought that was a little problematic to say that. You know, and, 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 and me and Dave haven't really talked since. You know, whatever. But and I even stuck up for for Hudak a little bit, you know, in the caucus, and it's to my own detriment. Thank you. I uh and and uh you know it's just I just don't I don't you know maybe some uh, maybe we could call people's associations problematic or whatever. I get that, but I don't think Dave himself personally is a problematic individual to the point of where I have to make public posts about him every single day and call him out on Twitter every single day because. I just don't, I don't see that. I don't see what you guys see. I just don't, man. And, I don't I like think him. I don't like him at all. I can't stand him. I think he's a piece of shit human being and I'm not going to back down from that. I don't care how much you like him or how much other people That's like fine. him. I can't gonna, stand him. I'm not going to tell you, you have to. Okay. Well, I Brian, not, Josh. I'm not going to tell you you have to. I don't think he's probably going to have you on your show, on a show, but. You know, whatever. That's cool. Well, and that's the other thing. Recently, he said to me, oh, why would I even engage with you? You only have 200 followers on Twitter. <laughs> what a stupid asshole thing to say. Uh, like, I'd rather, have, I'd rather have a hundred followers. Right? None of them are goddamn groipers. <laughs> but okay. Oh, okay. We can. I don't, we can oh. I don't actually know what the word groiper is. It's the so. Nick Fuentes people. Yeah, the, yeah. I, don't, I don't know like what the origin of the actual word is, but I just know that's like his following. They call yep. themselves the Gripers. Really, Nick yeah. Fuentes? Huh? That's a guy I don't like. I'll tell you, I don't like that guy at all. Oh, he's in fact, Nick, if, Nick, if you're watching this and you wanted to have like a charity even May fight or something, I'd love to do it anytime. <laughs> I want to see that. Oh, that would be awesome. I would enjoy that as well. <laughs> uh, last defended Fuentes a little bit. Last last time I asked for a charity MMA fight with a oh yeah uh, with with an alt right. Yeah character he blocked me on facebook but if you're watching this if you're watching this augustus he, he's I'm not in, he's in he's in jail right now i know i'm a little, I'm a little bigger than his wife <laughs> he was the one that challenged him i forgot about that josh that was fantastic man i enjoyed that okay so we'll move on to something else so what's your take on the george floyd protest do you think there's some good coming from them or well yeah or of course what? man I, I don't know if you saw me in the street marching uh but i i did a about a six mile march here with chris olsby and amos joseph and uh i mean thousands of people out of des moines right here right up to the state house uh down martin luther king and and uh you know what? i support it dude i think I think that a lot of people in this country right now are waking up to the state violence. They're starting to really understand that the state is constant brutality. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. That's what governments around the world do. And I think, I think people are starting to really understand that. And I think it's great for libertarians because we've been preaching against this stuff for so long that we finally like, see, see, it's happening. Look right there on camera every single day. You could see it happening, you know, and, and I just got in this conversation. I made a post on my Twitter about, you know, institutional racism. It, it, it exists. You cannot ever tell me that institutional racism doesn't exist when you're you're looking me in the face and you have the knowledge of, of the, the tough on crime bills. You have the knowledge of the, the war on drugs, the racist war on drugs, gun legislation. Uh, you know, 
the, the, the disparities between crack and cocaine sentencing. You can't tell me that you have the knowledge of those things and you don't believe institutional mm -hmm. racism exists. It does. 100%. It, it, it is disproportionately aimed at people of color in this country. And we have the opportunity to stand next to them and say, you know, nobody in our country is going to take this police brutality anymore. Nobody's going to take these disparities in the criminal justice system anymore. You're going to make it fair for everybody or we're going to keep marching until, until you do. And so, yeah, I think it's a good thing. And, and some people got mad at me about that. I don't care. I, I just don't care. I think, I think it's a great cause. I think, you know, uh, uh, equality under the law. If we have to have a law, it should be equality under the law for all people, regardless of color or creed or sexual orientation or religion. It doesn't matter. Everyone should fall under the same exact laws, have the same exact sentencing for the same crimes. If they, you know, if they're going to go to jail for preferably crimes with the victim, and, you know, obviously for me. Um, but I, I, I just don't, I don't get the hatred towards the movement. I, I get that people don't like looting and all that shit. I'm not a fan of looting either. I don't think yeah. it's a way to, I don't think it's a way to get more people on your side, but I also don't think that it's really always BLM and shit doing that stuff either. I think, no, you know, I think it's uh, I think there's outside interference there. I think that there's people that are, uh, you know, trying to be opportunistic there. And sure. so, because, because I marched with thousands of people in the street here in Des Moines and it stayed peaceful the entire time. We were right up to the steps of the state house. All the cops got in these lines, got all scared. And then we marched a little further, went down Martin Luther King, and it was cool. It was a really good night, you know. Good. People were people were uniting right there in the streets. Thousands of people. It didn't matter what color they were. They were they were uniting in the streets. They were talking about any police brutality. They were saying that you know uh, people with more melanin, their lives their lives matter, and 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 they should matter under the eyes of the law. They should matter in the eyes of police. And so it's it's really you know. It's a great movement, and I, and I think it's one that libertarians really have a, a great opportunity to show that we're at the forefront of, of uh, criminal justice reform. We're at the forefront of ending uh, 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 qualified immunity, of, of you know just making everyone equal under law. We're the only party in this country that's actually fighting for those things. And, and you can see that from Justin Mosh, who just flipped to libertarian, immediately started the bill to end qualified immunity. You can see that from Spike Cohen and Joe Jorgensen, who are presidential and, and vice presidential candidates, while they're talking about complete overhaul of the criminal justice system of the police system. I mean, this is good stuff, and we're the one party that can actually go out there and do that stuff because we don't have any, we don't have any, you know, of these outside interests influencing our politics. We're just here because we want to see freedom in our lifetime, and so it's it's a really good time, and and, and I, I think that you know all libertarians should jump on board and say, hey, it's to stop killing people in our streets, man. It's done. It's over. <laughs> Agreed. And it's frustrating because I've seen so many libertarians, you know, complaining about it. And that just doesn't make any logical sense because I think you just laid it out perfectly, Josh. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect group for libertarians to be joined with in the cause. It's a cause that we've, you know, been very close to from the very beginning. So, yeah, good, good for you. That's fantastic. You were out there doing that. So, kudos. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're not saying it's that the protests are worse than the state or whatever it was. I don't remember the exact quote. But. No, no, well, the funny thing is, is I'm running for chair. Everybody always has some kind of gripe with me, you know, and, and it's just how it is. And I found out that there was a group of people, all in the Fakertarians, by the way, actually attacking me for marching with, with these people, you know, the BLM and, and the, and the anti-state people and, and the, the other boot boys there and all kinds of stuff during this march. And, and there's people who, who are such detractors of mine personally that they actually used that event to attack me because I, because I was laughing uh, during a small video that I took. And I'm like, there's a man dancing in the, in the march right behind me. It was, a, it was a good thing. It was a beautiful thing to see all of these people out there fighting the state. I mean, saying that we're not going to take police brutality and, and state violence in our country anymore. And you want me to be sad and solemn about that? I was stoked. It was like the most exciting night of my life. Get out of here. Yeah, I saw that, and I thought that was kind of a disingenuous, ridiculous attack. And, Josh, honestly, I do see a lot of attacks on you as just that. It's like, why? That's just – it's ridiculous. Attack for the ideas. That don't don't attack the person. Oh, this isn't anything. In 2018, they went after my 75-year-old grandma a year after, less than a year after my grandfather passed away. These, are, these aren't good people. They're not good people, man. They're just not. And, and, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying everything they say is false. Uh, but the, the vast majority of it is either 
a small kernel of truth snowballed into this giant, huge, like monstrosity that they've made up about me, or just completely no truth to it whatsoever. And 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 you know, at this point, I'm so used to it, I don't I don't even really care anymore. Sometimes I entertain them with an argument just in case somebody's watching, they can see that I didn't do those things. I have screenshots that can combat most of the stuff that they say. Uh, it's just people are going to do that to me because they don't want me to be the chair of the party, but. You know, I, I have the wind in my sails right now, and I, and I have a, a very broad movement of, of, of small L libertarians in this country that support me, that, that want to see a party that can actually go out and fight the duopoly. And, uh, and if they want me to stop, they're going to have to kill me. The, these, these petty attacks online ain't, ain't ever going to stop. Not ever. Okay, so you were a big proponent of an in-person libertarian convention. Oh, yeah. um, and Florida, where the convention's happening in a few weeks, is experiencing a pretty big resurgence of COVID-19 cases. Do you still, still yeah, I can't even talk, God. Do you still think an in-person convention is the right idea, or, or are you? Well, my, my, uh, my hotel room and air, airfare's booked already, so uh, it's happening. So, I mean, you know, whether I think it's a good idea or not, I, you know, I think that we're a party based on individual uh, uh, responsibility. And if you think that maybe getting sick is a bad idea for you, you probably should stay home. If you don't think it's a bad idea for you, if you're not worried about it, if you're going to take the precautions that we're asking you to take, wear the mask, wash your hands, stay, try to stay six feet away from people, I think you'll be okay, uh, especially if you're a healthy person. Um, and anything outside of that, as far as the, the virtual stuff goes, it, that's all going to be up to the delegates on the, on the convention floor, right? They have to pass a bylaws amendment that says people can vote remotely. It's going to take two-thirds uh, a vote. Of the, of the convention body to pass. I can't tell you one way or the other if it's going to pass. I support it for places like New York, for sure, where they, you know, they're a hot spot. They're not allowed to really do a lot of traveling without quarantining right now. I support it. I think, the, I think New York needs it. Maybe New Jersey, too. I, there might be one other state or two other states, too. But, um, you know, I, I just think that's all going to be up to the delegates, whether I support it or don't support it. Um, and, and it doesn't matter one way or, or another to me. I've already, I've already, gone around and surveyed every delegate I possibly could. I wasn't afraid of losing online. You know, a lot of people are like, Josh just wants an in-person in, in convention because he's, gonna, he's afraid he's going to lose online. I wasn't. I wasn't afraid. I surveyed the delegates and I had a minimum of 400 and I still had another 500 that I hadn't talked to. And we only needed 540 delegates. So I wasn't worried, man. I really wasn't scared at all. I wasn't telling my delegates that we, that you know, that I was going to lose if, if we did it online. I, I was... I was per fully prepared the weekend of the online convention and do my, my chair election online. And so that's a, that's a rumor that someone made up about me. I, I was never scared, never, ever scared. And, and it, even if we have to go, even if we have to go to an online, all online convention and we get shut down, we can't go to Florida. I'm still not scared, man. You know, win or lose, I'm going to keep doing what I do. Um, but, but I wasn't afraid of losing. I, I thought, I think that I had the opportunity to win it online too. So. Okay. Um, will you be Reinviting Bill Well to join the party again. Uh, Bill is Bill is a lifetime member of the Libertarian Party already. That, so uh, that is true. You know, I don't have to invite. I'll tell you <laughs> what. I'll tell you who I won't be inviting. I won't be inviting John Bolton to the party. That's for sure. Uh, I won't. Uh, any other war hawk that that can't denounce their war hawkism, their their foreign interventional pandering. I don't know whatever you want to call it. No, stay away, man. We don't want you unless you're gonna you know denounce that war hawkish bullshit that you've been pulling over the last you know couple of decades uh i you know we're not a big fan of bombing brown kids overseas so uh no i i mean bill if bill wants to come back to the party that's fine I, i'm not going to support him for vice president or president that's for sure but you know, if he wants to come to the party and hold some fundraiser and all that stuff more power to him man i was just thinking of that debate moment in uh in 2018 oh, the worst, worst the worst okay so first of all that was the first live debate i'd ever been in in my entire life I, i've since then done toastmasters for two years uh, I have since then worked with a debate co a debate coach, an actual coach on debate. Uh, this debate in Florida is going to be a much different debate. So I hope I hope Joe Bishop Henchman and Mike Shipley are ready for that because um, I am. I certainly am. And, and uh, I was just nervous, man. I was like a deer in headlights. Uh, you know, the Prags gave a bunch of tokens to, to, to Matt Kino to get him up there to basically troll me into to losing my temper on stage. And then when they asked me, they asked my one question, I just went blank, you know. And I heard somebody in the back of the room yell, hey, Nick, what do you think about Bill Wells? I was like, yeah, Nick, what do you think about Bill Wells? And, <laughs> and as soon as I said that, I was like, what are you doing? Why did you say that? And he's just like, you know, it was like a T-ball. He was like, all right, here we go. You know, home run. And, and uh, it was just, it was my bad. And, you know, I, 
I, I should have done a lot more prep for that debate. I didn't realize that how big it was going to be. There's, you know, a thousand people in a room. There's light shining all in our face. People are screaming. It felt like kind of like a rock star, you know? And yeah. I was, just, uh, I was just really nervous. My hands were shaking under the podium. I was trying to take notes and I was like scribbling and shaking. And I just had never been in a debate like that, you know? And so I didn't do well. And, and in fact, Matt Welch from, uh, from Reason Magazine, he, he's in the back of the room. He walks up to Larry Sharp and he goes, well, what do you think about your boy? And Larry goes, he's done. He's done. You know, he's done. <laughs> that way through. And then uh, I think it was Jackie. Jackie Perry or whatever. Um, I was coming off stage and I, I you know, I go off stage and I'm just, I'm just defeated. I'm just like, what, did, what are you doing? Why did you do this? You know, what a dummy. And, and I, I walk out to the back and I pull out my phone. And the first thing I see is Jackie Perry on, uh, on Facebook saying, Josh Smith walking off the stage, shaking his head like he knows he lost. <laughs> Man, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to bed. Uh, it was, it was pretty bad, but, um, I'm a different I'm a different debater this time and and so if anybody thinks they're gonna get that same Josh at the uh, at the at the convention in Orlando they're, they're sadly mistaken I wish I had the Rocky theme queued up right now because that would be absolutely perfect I mean we're just building the momentum going into the battle you're bringing a whole new <laughs> specimen of Josh Smith into that debate so that should be interesting well, to see I have a lot more to talk about too you know I didn't have all I had was ideas in 2018 I ran on ideas and promises. I didn't have any successes to show. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any meat to my, to my arguments. I was just up there saying words to try and get people to understand that I thought this blueprint would work. Now I get to go up there and show, you know, say, Hey man, I'm the number one recruiter in the party, basically, you know, unless you count Jess Mears who gets paid to do it. And Tom Woods, who's the only other person that's bigger than me and, and, and Jess, I think right now, I don't know. Uh, but you know, I, I have those things to point to. I have the the members who have already joined the regional media team. You know, people who've agreed to be on it, like Larry Sharp and Eric Rodsep and great great speakers. You know, I, I and I've worked on a bunch of campaigns. I've helped people secure financing for ballot access issues, and you know, I've traveled around the country. I raised five thousand dollars for the Iowa State Party as their keynote speaker. I raised five thousand dollars for the uh, the Illinois State Party as their keynote speaker. I mean, I'm, I did all the stuff I said I was going to do. So. I get to go up there on stage and lay it all out for everybody. And at the end of the day, that's all I can do. You know, all I can do is go up there and say, Hey, look, this is the body of work. This is what I'm promising. This is what the body of work will do. If you make me the chair and give me this platform. And, and at the end of the day, that's it. That's all I can do. I can't do anything more than that or anything. I won't do anything less than that, you know? And so, and, and, and make my case to the delegates and hope that they, they take it. And then they understand that, that, um, you know, that the work that I've done and, and the, the, the things that I think I can accomplish with that work going forward over the next two years are it's important stuff for the party. It really is. So. Okay. Brian, do you have anything else you want to ask before we wrap up? Cause I know Josh is a busy guy. Yeah, no, I don't really have anything else to ask. I do want to say, Josh, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the criticism uh, the way you did. I, I enjoyed the conversation. I enjoyed the debate and hopefully you'll come back on again sometime. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll take that. Yeah, we'll accept that. We appreciate you coming on, though. Yeah, of course, John. It was good to see you guys, man. You know, you know, we're we're gonna have our differences, and I'm gonna oh, tell yeah. you about our differences. But I, it's not like I hate you guys or anything. No, you know? sure, no, not at all. And like I said, Josh, I mean, when I see the other stuff, I I never join in on that because I, you're you're one man. I think you're doing what you do. Uh, you know, your personal life is your personal life. I think those kind of criticisms are ridiculous um and no keep doing what you're doing man and i i do appreciate you coming on tonight hey thanks a lot brian thanks Jim. you're welcome thanks to josh smith lp chair candidate for coming on the show tonight episode five of your fakertarians on this june 27 2020 thanks for all of our viewers out there remember you can also find us on the youtube you can find us on all the podcast sites or at least most of them we're still working on that have a drink on us tonight, do a line or two, and smoke a whole bunch of weed. We're the Fakertarians. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>